Hello all and welcome back. In this video, we are going to cover CloudFront Origin Access Control and Origin Access Identity with S3, followed by a quick demo. CloudFront can be used to distribute the content from an S3 bucket. Even though CloudFront does not expose the underlying S3 URL, it can be known to the user if shared directly or used by applications. Users accessing S3 objects directly would bypass the controls provided by CloudFront signed URLs or signed cookies. CloudFront supports origin access control and origin access identity to prevent users from directly accessing objects from S3. Origin access control and origin access identity is a special CloudFront user created and associated with the distribution to access S3 and the S3 bucket permissions need to be configured to provide access to the origin access control or identity. When users access the object from CloudFront, it uses the OAC or OAI to fetch the content on the user's behalf, while the S3 object's direct access is restricted. Origin Access Control or OAC is now recommended over Origin Access Identity and provides the additional benefits like enhanced security practices like short-term credentials, frequent credential rotations, and resource-based policy. It also supports all AWS regions. It supports S3 server-side encryption with AWS KMS or Key Management Service. It supports comprehensive HTTP methods including dynamic requests like put and patch. In this demo, I would be covering both CloudFront Origin Access Control and the legacy Origin Access Identity configurations. Let's navigate to the S3 console and quickly create a new S3 public bucket. Note, creating public buckets is not recommended. However, we would be creating it in this demo to allow us to test quickly. Let's name our bucket Jayendra Patel hyphen public. It's still unique and available. Let's select the US East North Virginia region. Let's go ahead with ACLs disabled, which will enforce bucket owner object ownership. For this demo, we will expose the bucket publicly. So let's disable the block all public access setting. Let's acknowledge the warning that the current settings might result in the bucket and the objects within would be public. We don't need versioning for this bucket, so let's keep it disabled. Let's use Amazon S3 Manage Keys option for encryption. Let's go ahead and create our bucket. The bucket has been successfully created. Note the access mentions the objects can be public. Let's edit the permissions to allow public read access to the bucket and its content. Let's navigate to the permissions tab and let's update our bucket policy. This policy provides an allow effect to all principles for the get object action on the bucket. Let's save the changes. Let's quickly upload couple of test files to the bucket. The upload is successful. Let's access the file. And yes, we can open the file from the browser. Let's start the testing with the CloudFront Origin Access Control. Let's create a CloudFront distribution with the newly created S3 bucket as the origin. Let's select the S3 bucket as the origin. We'll keep most of the configuration as defaults. Let's leave the origin path blank, name as is. You can now see the origin access options, public, origin access control, which is recommended, and the origin access identity or the legacy identities. Let's select origin access control with the signing behavior to sign requests and the origin type as S3. 
Amazon recommends using sign requests for the signing behavior. With this setting, CloudFront always signs all requests that it sends to the S3 bucket origin. Let's create the control setting. A warning is displayed to update the S3 bucket policy to allow the CloudFront IAM principle role access to S3. We'll update it shortly. We will leave the cache behavior as default, cache key and origin request as default, no function associations. We do not need WAF for this demo. Let's select do not enable security protections. Rest of the settings look good. Let's go ahead and create our CloudFront distribution. The CloudFront distribution would take around 10 to 15 minutes to be deployed and enabled. Let's update the S3 permissions to modify the bucket policy to allow the CloudFront IAM service principal role access to the S3 bucket. Let's copy the policy already created. Let's edit the S3 bucket policy to remove the public access policy and add the copied policy. The S3 bucket policy allows the CloudFront service principal to access the bucket with the condition element in the policy to allow CloudFront access to the bucket only when the request is on the behalf of the CloudFront distribution that contains the S3 origin. Let's save the changes. We are good with the configurations. Let's navigate back to the CloudFront distribution. Let's check the origin access. An origin access has been created in the control settings. Our CloudFront distribution is still deploying. And it's enabled now. Let's copy the CloudFront distribution domain name and let's access the first .txt file. And it works. Let's also check the direct access to the S3 file. And it fails with access denied. So we have now created a CloudFront distribution with S3 bucket as an origin and origin access control. To deny access to the S3 bucket directly, but only through the CloudFront distribution. Let's create a CloudFront distribution with origin access identity to expose the S3 bucket now. Let's select the jayendrapatil.public S3 bucket as the origin. We'll keep most of the configurations as defaults. Let's leave the origin path blank, name as is. We can see the origin access configuration with the options public, origin access control which is recommended and the origin access identity, which is marked legacy. Let's select origin access identity or legacy access identities and let's create a new OAI. S3 bucket policy needs to be updated to allow the CloudFront IAM principal role access to S3. We can either do it manually or let the console update the policy. Let's select yes, update the bucket policy and we will check the policy that's added. We'll leave the cache behavior as default, cache key and origin requests as default. We don't need function associations for this demo as well. We do not need WAF. Let's select do not enable security protections. Rest of the settings look good. Let's go ahead and create our CloudFront distribution. CloudFront distribution would take around 10 to 15 minutes to be deployed and enabled. Let's wait for it. Let's check the origin access. An origin access has now been created under the identities legacy. Let's navigate to the S3 console and check the bucket policy in the permissions tab. A S3 bucket policy to allow the CloudFront service principal to access the bucket to allow CloudFront distribution to access the bucket only when the request is on the behalf of the CloudFront distribution that contains the S3 origin has been added. Let's remove the public access policy. Direct access to the S3 bucket is now disabled. 
Let's test our changes. Let's navigate back to the CloudFront console. Our CloudFront distribution is still deploying. And it's enabled now. Let's copy the CloudFront distribution name and let's access the first.txt file. And it works. Let's check direct access to the S3 file and it fails with the access denied. So that's it for the demo covering CloudFront origin access control and the origin access identity with the S3 bucket as an origin. I hope you liked the demo. Thank you all. All right, that was it. Thank you for watching. You can check out my website and connect me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. For any feedback, please leave a comment down below. To see more videos like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. Thank you.